do so wickedly. But notice what they said. They said, stand back, and they said again, this one fellow, that's Lot, came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Isn't that what they're saying to us? We say, don't do so wickedly. Don't do so wickedly. If it's not in the Bible, and you're trying to bind back to God, you're trying to worship God with something that's not in the Bible, we're saying, do not so wickedly. And everybody says to us, stand back, you just trying to judge us. Things haven't changed. Solomon said it. Nothing new under the sun. This is exactly what's going on today. People are defending the sodomites. They're, they're defending the homosexuals. They're defending everything that is wicked. And when we point out, when we point out that it's contrary to the will of God, everybody says you be, you're, you're being a judge. When we point out that people are in churches that are not in the Bible and therefore you're doing wickedly, they say, you're being a judge. You're being a judge. Well, what's wrong with being a whistleblower? Friends, what's, what's really wrong with being a, a whistleblower? Can you please tell me? Can you please tell me what's wrong with being a whistleblower? As a matter of fact, think about this. What would a football game be like without a whistleblower? Right? What would a football game be like with a whistleblower? Look at these two guys right here. They're, they're in the middle of a fight. And the whistleblower is going to stop it. The whistleblower says, no, you cannot behave such a way. Yet that's a penalty. Personal foul. See? The whistleblower. Now, I know people don't like the referees, but you have to be honest. If there weren't referees, there weren't whistleblowers, it wouldn't be worth watching. You know? If there wasn't a whistleblower in a football game, you wouldn't want to watch it. You know? It'd be like you went to a, you know, you, you just going to a, a, a street brawl or something. That's all it'd be like. And so you have to have a whistleblower. Here, the whistleblower. The whistleblower is the one who makes sure the rules are followed. Now think about it. If there wasn't a whistleblower, who's going to say whether this is a first down or not? Who's going to say, yes, you get four more tries? You see, the whistleblower actually helps to make sure everybody's following the rules. But you just don't like the whistleblower. You just don't like the whistleblower. See, you don't like the Church of Christ because we're the referees. We're showing the rules, and let's be honest. The folks in the Church of Christ know the rules better than most of you people out there who claim to have the Holy Spirit. Now, you have to admit that. Because some of you out there with the, with the so-called Holy Spirit, having all the divine knowledge of the rule book, can't even quote the rule book. See? So you're mad at us because we're whistleblowing. Because we're simply showing you where what you're doing is contrary to the rules. And that's why everybody hates the referee. Everybody has a referee. Oh, you know, that's a bad call, ref. Well, put it to the... Why don't you take it to an instant replay? Look, if you don't think that we made the right call, if you don't think that we're making the right call, when we say that the Pentecostal, Holiness, Lutheran, Presbyterian, firstborn, free deliverance, Christian church of the apostolic faith number 12 is not in the Bible, just review it in the book. I say, just go to the real book. If you don't think the whistleblowers are making the right call, then just go to the book, friends. So that's what we're doing. We're saying go back to the book. When Jesus said, uh, judge not that you be not judged, he didn't say don't use the rule book. He just said make sure that everybody's following the rule book. Judge not that you be not judged, for with, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. By all means, make sure the referees are using the rule book. You know, if one of these guys right here said, you know what? They, 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 these guys only went nine and a half yards. They went nine yards and two feet. And one of them says, well, you know what? Let's just give them a first down anyway. You wouldn't want that guy to be the referee. You'd say, wait a minute. That's not the rule. The rule said you got to go ten yards. The rules say you got to get past the stick in order to get four more tries. You'd be upset. 
Now, somebody would say, well, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind a referee only saying nine yards. Nine yards and two feet is a first down. That's easier to get. Yeah, you don't mind it. But I tell you what, when someone else, when they do it to the other team, then you're going to be upset. See? You can say, oh, you're cheating. You're not following the rules. You know what? Folks, all you folks in the denominations in these church of men, y'all are cheating. Y'all are saying, well, you know what? We're going to fudge on the rules. We're going to bend the rules and we're going to add to the rules and we're going to make exceptions to the rules so that our team can win. And that's what, that's what Mr. Bobby was saying to Mark. If y'all would just be like us and bend the rules, we wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, we would. We'd have a problem. We'd have a problem with God. See, we'd have a problem with God. Why don't you obey the rules? Why don't you obey the rules and then we won't have a problem? Why is it that the whistleblower always has to give up and throw the rule book out. How, why don't you just obey the rule? Now can you imagine, let's stay with the football for a little bit here. Can you imagine this guy right here, this guy right here jerking on this, this other guy's helmet and the referee says, and the referee says to this guy, personal foul, 15 yard penalty. And he said, well wait a minute. Why don't you just throw the rules out? Can you imagine what that would be like? imagine how, how upset this guy would be? See, that wouldn't be fair. Why don't you obey the rules and then we'll all get along? See? You think this guy's going to tell the referee, you know what, if you'll just look the other way, I'll beat this guy to a pulp and then we'll be, then we'll be happy. Well, everybody would be happy but that guy. If you don't follow the Bible, friends, you may be happy for a while. But you won't be happy in the end. You may be happy for a while, but you won't be happy in the end. In Hebrews 10, no, it's, it's Hebrews 11. Pleasure, sin for a season. Was it 11? There it is. Choosing rather to suffer the affliction of the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Yeah, you'll be happy. This. Uh, uh, disregarding the rules or disobeying the rules for, for a while, but pretty soon the rules going to catch up with you. Friends, you need a whistleblower. You need someone that's going to point out the truth for you. You need, you need someone that will help you know the rules, and that's what we're doing. We're trying to help you know the rules. We're trying to help you know what's right and wrong, and that's why I think we can agree with Brother Shannon's uh, uh, sentiments here. Here's what he says. That's why I'm here trying to educate people who are uneducated spiritually or religiously. You see what I'm trying to do? Let's say it one more time. That's why I'm here trying to educate people who are uneducated spiritually or religiously. We're trying to educate people who are uneducated. You're ignorant of the rules. My friends, there's nothing wrong with being ignorant. But there's, a, there's something to be ashamed of if you stay that way. See, we're always trying to impress upon your minds the need for authority. Obey the rules. The whistleblower is the one who knows the rules the best. And that's what we're trying to do. We want to be the whistleblower so you can know what the Bible says and you can know whether you're following the will of God or not. Isn't that really what, what we're all about? In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 17, Paul says, therefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And you don't know what the will of the Lord is unless you know the rule book. You see? So don't be mad if we're, the, if we're blowing the whistle. Don't be mad for blowing the whistle. You, just, you ought to be happy someone cares enough about you or cares enough for you to, uh, to uh, uh, help you understand what the will of God is. Now, let me give you an illustration. In 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 2, it all comes down to authority, what God said. 2 Samuel 7 and verse 2, The king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in the house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth in the curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, 
Do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. Now there's a lot of people who don't know the rules. And they think they can do whatever they want to in their heart and God's going to be pleased with it. But when you find out the rules, when you find out the rules, it may be that you have to do something different. David had within his heart to build a house for the Lord. And Nathan says, go do what's on your heart. But God came to uh, Samuel, uh, to Nathan the next night and says, no. That's not what I want. That's not what I want. You need to, you need to go back <clears throat> and tell David, you need to go back and tell David that uh, uh, he doesn't need to build me a, a house. Let me just go, I thought I had the next verse up here. 2 Samuel 7, verse 2. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan and said, Say, Go and tell thy servant David, thus said the Lord, thou shalt build me a house. Uh, shalt thou build me a house uh, for to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in my house since uh, the time that I brought the children of Israel uh, out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and a tabernacle. In all the places where I have walked and all the children of Israel spake, Spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? Now therefore thou shalt say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from the following the sheep, to be a ruler over my people, over Israel, and I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and hast cut off thine enemies out of thy side, and have made the name great name, uh, made thee a great name, uh, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth, more I will appoint thee a place, and so forth. He says, But as since the time that I command the judge and builder of Israel, and have caused thee to rest on all thine enemies, I'm going to tell thee, uh, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. And so here's, here's the thing. He tells David, I never asked you for a house. You may have had it in your heart, but I never said it. If I had wanted it, I would have said it. Now, friends, you need to realize that David, a man after God's own heart, wanted to do something for God, but he had to know the rules. And the rules came when Nathan got a word from the Lord. Now, do you think David was upset when Nathan came and told him, uh, you know what I told you about building that house? We're going to have to put an X nay on that. You're not going to build it. Do you think David was mad? Do you think David was mad when he got some correction? Nathan was the whistleblower. Nathan would have said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, the rules are not quite right. You're not going to get to build a house. You're not going to get to build a house. Now friends, I think surely you can see that principle. Just because you can do a thing doesn't mean that it's a thing you can do. Notice this. In Joshua chapter 6 verse 17, the children of Israel going up to fight Jericho. And here is what God says. The city shall be accursed. That means dedicated. The city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live she and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye, in any wise, keep yourself from the accursed or the devoted thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. All the spoils were to be dedicated to the Lord. You couldn't take of any of the spoils, the gold or silver, what have you, because it was dedicated to the Lord. All the silver, the gold, the vessel of brass and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasure of the Lord. Israel did not have authority to take the spoils of Jericho. Could they? Yeah, they could have. But did they? You know, were they supposed to? No, they weren't supposed to. They could, but they weren't supposed to. 
And here's what the very next verse says, Jer Joshua 7, verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the cursed thing for Achan, the son of Carmine, the son of Zebedee, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Achan did something that God told him not to do. Now, do you think, do you think it was going to be a bad thing if someone told on Achan? Now, in this case, in this case, Achan was found out. The Lord weeded it down and Achan confessed. Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus have I have I done when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I covered them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. You see, I found you out. Achan got the whistle blown on him. Now, was that a bad thing? Let me tell you something, friends. When you read the Bible and you read what happened to the children of Israel because of Achan's sin, everybody in Israel was going to be glad that Achan had the whistle blown on him. You think about that. The children of Israel, when they went up to battle, when they went out to fight, the Bible says that they went up to fight Ai, and they got whooped. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Aven, to the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people labor that, uh, thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30, uh, 30 and six men, for they chased them, uh, chased them uh, from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down before the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Now I can assure you this, friends. These people were glad that Achan was found out, that someone blew the whistle on Achan. These people were glad to know who was doing wrong. And I, I would dare say that the families of the 36 men who died were probably really glad that it was found out because the sin of one man cost the life of 36. Now, someone wants to call up and say, you owe my preacher an apology. Your preacher owes you an apology for lying to you. He's not telling you what the Bible says. And you want us to apologize to him? Now, now who, who really needs to apologize here? A man who claims to preach the Bible and yet he can't show you the church you're in in the Bible? Who really needs to apologize? Who really needs to owe, owe somebody an apology? You owe the whole community an apology, sir, for calling in and trying to defend a man who's, who's a coward and can't even show what he's preaching in the Bible. You see? Insult our intelligence saying we owe you an apology. Friends, come on. The whistleblower always is the bad guy. But all we're doing is trying to help you out. All we're doing is trying to help you out. Look at this. In 2 Chronicles 26, 16. 2 Chronicles 26, 16. We're going to talk about the king. The king uh, of Zion. He says, But when he was, when his heart, when but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he trespassed against the Lord his God and went to the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of, of incense. And Azariah, the priest, went in after him and with fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah, the king, and said unto him, it appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, 
but to the priest, the son of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. But go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shalt thou be for thine honor from the Lord thy God. You know what? Those priests, I know the Bible, the, the Bible says they were, they were valiant men, but they were pretty sorry, weren't they? Blowing the whistle on the king. All he was doing was trying to burn some incense. That's pretty low down for them to, to blow the whistle on it, wasn't it? No, friends, they were doing what the Lord said. These are the honorable men. These are the honorable men, Azariah and the 80 priests that were with him. They were honorable because they withstood the king and said, It appertaineth not to thee. We're blowing the whistle on you. We're not going to give you a pass. We're blowing the whistle to show you you are not following the rules. Now, friends, are we really the bad guy? Are we really the bad guy for blowing the whistle when people aren't doing what's right? You see? Is, is, it, really, is it really us who, who are, are causing all the problem? Again, it gets down to not <clears throat> can you do it. It gets down to do you have the authority to do it. And we're blowing the whistle on the people who don't have authority to do what they're doing. Isn't that what a whistleblower does? Like that referee in the football game? When someone breaks the rules, he blows the whistle. Someone jumps offside, he blows the whistle. Why? Because you can't get away with it. You can't get away with it. But it all comes down to authority versus ability. Brother John Shannon does a pretty good job here talking about women preachers. Listen to what he says. Do you know his ministers? Now some of them women preachers. There's one on television called George Smile. How many of y'all saw it? You saw it, didn't you? Right. Why is she on television? Listen, the girl can preach. There's some black women on television. Martin Luther King Jr. has got a daughter in Atlanta. She's a fantastic preacher. You're going to put the phone numbers up. She can do it. But the question is not ability. The question is authority. Uh-oh. You didn't get that, did you? Leave your keys in your car, in your Cadillac car. And here's old Joe Blow come around with his pants hanging down and his hat turned to the side, and he sees the keys in your car. He can drive your car just as well as you can. Here's the difference. Ability and authority. Oh, you see it. All right, it's all ability or authority. Isaiah, he had the ability to burn incense. He didn't have the authority. And the priest came in and blew the whistle. You can't do this. David wanted to build a house to the Lord. Nathan had to come back and say, you can't do this. He blew the whistle. Why is it that we are such bad guys when we're trying to show you what's in the Bible and we say, you can't do this. Now, are we really the bad guy in all this? You want to work with the Lord? Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. Could you do one thing for me? I don't know. What is it? Could you pull up the Ten Commandments there? What? Ten Commandments. What about the Ten Commandments? Could you pull them up and show them? Maybe. Why? What? Go ahead and make your point while I'm doing it. it my point is, just pull the Ten Commandments up and I'll show you. I'll tell you. All right, here they are. Here they are. What does all ten say? Have no other God before me. Don't make any graven image. Don't bow down to them. Uh, remember this. Uh, don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not kill. Commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet. Okay. Now, what's your point? 
My point being is, uh, I mean, you, it, it's, it, uh, uh, they, uh, it don't matter what religion, the way I don't, it, it's, as long as you believe. Believe what? You believe in the God and, and you believe he died for your sin. Now, now what verse are you quoting? I'm just saying, if you believe. I know, but where is it in the Bible? Where is that in the Bible? That's the whole deal, the believing, the faith. But where is that in the Bible? I'm just saying that's faith. But where is that in the Bible? That that comes with believing is faith. Can you give me a verse? What is the what is the church's name you you uh, represent your uh, Jesus a uh, faith of what? I'm an evangelist in the church of Christ. It belongs to church. It belongs to Christ. What is wrote on it? Faith. What do you mean? What's wrote on it? Is faith not in the Bible? Yeah, faith's in the Bible. That's what I just said. As long as you've got faith, I don't care what denomination you are. Faith, as long as you live those Ten Commandments there, I don't care what denom whatever you are, that's, uh, I mean, I don't know how much better you can do. All right, well, here the devils have faith. They believe and tremble. So does it matter to them? Faith in God. They believe in God. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. James 2.19. I've been halfway around this world. I served in Vietnam uh, two years. In Buddhists, I've seen Buddhists over great big Buddhists. Vietnamese believed in Buddhists. Right. Believed in white elephants. Okay. And uh, that's not the point I'm trying to make, sir. That's, I've, I've been I've been to uh, most most of the states in a lot of countries, and they've got different beliefs. But sir, and, you, uh, you said you said belief in God is all that matters, and I'm saying the devils believe in God. No, that's not what I said. Well, I said have faith, faith, not believe in God. Have faith. Faith, faith. is the big deal there. That's the, the that's the whole word. Faith. Faith in what? Faith in God. God. That's what I'm saying. The devils believe. That's the same word as faith. The devils have faith right. and tremble. But you got pulled up right there. Thou believe that there is God. Uh, uh, there is one God. One. That's what I'm saying. You you drawing away from it. Believe in that one God and you'll be okay. But I'm saying the devils also believe. I'm. I'm talking about these Ten Commandments. I ain't talking about a devil. But, sir, the Ten Commandments are in the Old Testament, the Law of Moses. Now, do you still keep all those Ten Commandments? The, what I'm saying is the Ten Commandments. Who wrote the Ten Commandments? God wrote them. Okay. God wrote the Ten That's what my whole point being. He I know. wrote those and Ten Commandments. You don't break those Ten Commandments and you believe Sir, you don't, you don't keep the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm just saying, if you believe and you live within the Ten Commandments, you live within those Ten Commandments, it don't make no difference. Well, well then let's throw the rest of the Bible away then. Well, you, you can because the Ten Commandments, if you live them, you're going to be perfect, right? No, that's what you said. Well, if, if the Ten Commandments, you live the Ten Commandments, you're not going to sin. So you telling me we can just get rid of the rest of the Bible and keep the Ten Commandments? If you live the Ten Commandments, you're going you're gonna to be perfect. Do you know what? So you ain't going to break no laws of God. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that Paul says differently. Paul says in Galatians five and verse four, Christ has become of no effect unto you who swear are justified by the law. You're fallen from grace. So you're wanting to go back to the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, and Paul says you're falling from grace. I, <laughs> no, you, you're preaching, like I said, who wrote the Ten Commandments? God did. Who wrote the New Testament? Okay. I, who wrote the New Testament? I'm talking about God wrote the Ten Commandments. It's, I'm sorry, who wrote the New Testament? Who wrote the New Testament? It may know what I'm saying. If you believe in that God, what Sir, God has written, 
and you live within those Ten Commandments, you can't, you can't go wrong. So let's throw the rest of the Bible away. No. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's the reason he wrote those Ten Commandments. Then why did he write the rest of it? That Ten Commandments is what you live by. Those are the those why did he write the rest of the book then if all we needed was the Ten Commandments? That's to justify the, what, what the biggest things that you can do. Say that again. The biggest things that you can do against God is those Ten Commandments. That's the reason he wrote those. How come you think it's not but Ten Commandments? That's the reason he calls them Ten Commandments. But sir, do you obey the Ten Commandments? Everybody sins every day. I'm, I said, do you keep the Ten Commandments? Everybody does. No, I, no, they don't. You don't. I, everybody that believes in God believes in the Ten Commandments. I said, do you keep them? I didn't say that I kept them. I said, if you can live within those... Do you try to keep them? Try to, yes. I you, try you, to. You, you remember the Sabbath and you keep it holy? I try to. You, you don't work on Saturday? I'm a disabled veteran. Do, do you do you do you not travel anywhere on Saturday? Do I travel? Yeah. Are you able to get out of the house? Does it say something in the, in the Ten Commandments about traveling? Yeah. Where? Do, do you only do? You, it's called work on the Sabbath day. Well, traveling. You, I don't know about what you're saying there. The Sabbath day, they could only travel about an eighth of a mile. How far do you travel? on Saturday. My point is, I don't think you keep the Sabbath. I don't think you keep the Ten Commandments. I didn't say I kept the and Ten I, and Commandments. And I'm saying, That's sir, the saying Ten Commandments... You. you can't get on and judge people by what they do. Sir, I can judge people by what they do. Jesus tells me to judge people by what they do. Judge? Jesus tells me to do that. Well, I heard you say, Jesus has told you to do that. Jesus spoke to you. Through His Word. Through his word. That's right. Here's what Jesus says right here. John 7, 24. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Now, did he tell me to judge? You're not, that, that, you're not supposed to judge people. Jesus says judge righteous judgment. Am I supposed to judge or not? Who's going to have the last judgment? Jesus says for me to judge righteous judgment. Am I supposed to judge or not? How do you know what righteous judgment is? Jesus says judge righteous judgment. Am I supposed to judge or not? I'm just asking you, how do you know what righteous judgment is? I'll tell you if you tell me if I'm supposed to judge or not. If you can tell me how, what righteous judgment is. Okay. Righteous judgment is judgment based upon the righteous word. Look at this right here. The word of righteousness. That's this book right here. So if I open the word of righteousness, then, then when I, when I uh, uh, want, to, want to make sure if something is righteous or not, I can judge righteous judgment right here. If it's not according to the righteous word of God, then I'm going to say it's not righteous. I made a righteous judgment. And that's why I say all these churches out here that are not in the book, they're not righteous. They're not in the word of righteousness. You said all churches. You've asked me something. I've told you the truth. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, the, do you, are you married? Yes. Does, uh, does your wife work? She's, she's a homemaker. Does she have a public job to bring in any money? No. What's your point? My point being, it's a different time now than it was a hundred, uh, any, any years, a thousand, fifteen hundred years ago because it's a hard time now. People so, so let's, so what are, you, what are you saying? Change the Bible because it's a different time? <laughs> You 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 throwing everything around, man. Well, what do you mean, man? What I mean, you got to you got to make a living some way or another without going out here stealing. Well, what's that got to do with this? What's that got to do with this? I'm said 
I heard a man on here, he made a good point and you couldn't answer. It, I don't remember the whole deal. Sir, you're the one running all over the place. What does that have to do with judging a righteous judgment? Whether my wife works outside the home or not, what does that have to do with a righteous judgment? Well, that's what, that, I'm jumping all over the place. Yeah. You're, you're jumping, I just asked about the Ten Commandments and you started, the, and you asked me something and I asked you something. What do you mean I'm jumping all every right. which way? All right, sir, here, here, we're going to get back to where we started then. You said, just follow the Ten Commandments. And I said, then should we get rid of the rest of this book? No, that's not what I said. I you said did say if, that. You with, said get rid of the rest of the book. If you can, can, you're not listening to what I'm saying. If you can can live those Ten Commandments, you're doing, you, you've done no wrong. I said if you live those, and ain't nobody can live those Ten Commandments. That's the reason those Ten Commandments are written. So why even say it? God wrote Ten Commandments, but you can't keep them. That's why he wrote them? That's, that's, that's Sir, his guidelines. Okay, all right. So should we follow the New Testament or not? You should follow these Ten Commandments that God should wrote. Should we follow the New Testament that God wrote? The Ten Commandments that God wrote. What about fine. who wrote the New Testament? I said the God wrote. I said who wrote the New Testament? I'm, you, I'm, you get, I'm saying that God wrote the Ten Commandments. You follow those. I understand God wrote the Ten Commandments. Who wrote the New Testament? Well, who wrote, who wrote the Bible you got in your hand? That's what I'm asking you. Well, you got it in your hand, you tell me. It's a King James. Who wrote it? Well, I'm King James Version. Who wrote it? I said the New Testament. But what are you doing with it holding it in your hand if, if man wrote it? I, I didn't say man wrote it. I'm asking you, who wrote the New Testament? Do you even know what the New Testament is, sir? Do you know what you got? <laughs> Do you know what the New Testament is? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, I don't, I'm Romans. Not, I'm, I'm not uh, literate about the Bible, okay. no. Matthew through Revelation, who wrote that? I said I'm not literate about the Bible. Okay, no. all right. If I'm wrong. All right, Listen, I'm going to take another call. Thanks for your call. You've been on the on phone for 13, almost 14 minutes with you. Thanks for your call. Okay, you're on the word of the Lord. Uh, yes, I got a question. Um... I just want to know, uh, you know, you was talking about the football and uh, needing uh, referees and stuff to keep the game right. Mm -hmm. Who made you a referee, dude? Right here. Who made you a referee? How about this right here? How about the Bible? Well, you know, that's that's great. But you see, y'all Texas boys have got it flipped because my grandmother was a brethren, and she was a dedicated Christian. And if you're going to sit here and say that she's Where's not in heaven because of her beliefs, and you know who wrote the King James? Okay. You wrote one of who wrote the so, Testament? Hey, hey, hey. Disciples wrote Excuse it. Me. Uh, that, Excuse me. That's who wrote it. Excuse it was me. Are we going to have dialogue from, here? You're going to talk about And you know what? I've come to you a little tense. All right. You know what? We're going to stop right there. I put you on hold. I know you. I know you can't hear me talking to you. But let's talk for a minute about your grandmother in the Church of the Brethren. You can't find the Church of the Brethren in this book. You just can't find it in the book. Now that's not me judging unrighteously. That's just stating a fact. So you tell me where the Church of the Brethren is in this book. Can you do that? Can you, Can you do that? Yeah, I'm here. Can, can you? Can I, I you don't show, matter, man. No, no, like listen, I say, listen. though, you say like I sir, do not. Sir, if it, sir, if sir, they don't sir. believe what you believe, sir, sir, we're gonna have a conversation here. I'm gonna hang up on you. Well, I can't. No, hear you no, you call in and you start taking over. I'm but, saying, can well, you well, show listen, me the church like of the bread in the Bible? And everything, but you know, you should give other people a chance to talk. That's sir, why you got I've given you a chance to talk. You rattled off the first minute, and never let me respond. Well, I'm waiting. No, you weren't waiting. Well, your, you your said tongue? that, uh, that the, the Brethren it's, Church is not in that... Uh, show it in the Bible. It's not in the Bible, right? Show it in the Bible. Does that mean everybody that believes that goes to hell? Show it in the Bible. Uh, it don't matter if it's in the Bible. Does that? Are you telling me they go to hell? Do you think you can be in a church that's not in the Bible and get to heaven? Well, I can believe that I can go to your church and, and, and I don't hear have a, a church. bunch of uh, uh, nonsense and go to hell quicker than I can any other church around here. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll show you what the church in the Bible, what's going to happen to the church in the Bible. All right. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. Christ is the Savior of the body. You see that? 
Yeah. All right. He's the Savior of the body. Now watch this. Ephesians 1, verse 22. The body, the church, is his body. So he's the Savior of the body, or he's the Savior of the church. Okay. Now can you be in a church, can you be in a church or in a body that's not mentioned in this book and get to heaven? He's going to save the body. Now, is okay, he going to save okay. a body that's not in this book? But your church is in that bu- in I, the Bible. I don't have a church. The Lord's church. Well, that, okay, then how are you getting to heaven? I'm, I'm in the Lord's church. Hey, it's not in the Bible. The Lord's church in the Bible. Yeah, well, show me. I just showed it to you right here. The church. The Lord's church. Uh, do you understand what you're reading, sir? That is that 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 is not an official church. So you you gonna change you gonna change the the, the the topic now? The Church of Christ. Sir, I'm not changing the topic. I'm in. I am everybody in. Everybody else, but you know what? Sir, I, I, I have a theory. I'm in. I am in the I'm Church of Christ. So strong. Why don't I'm we in the do church this? Of Christ. Why don't what you get together you and you get all your people from your church to pray for you? And we I, have an arm wrestling match, and let's see who wins. I don't. I don't have a church. Well, that's why you're going to hell, brother. I, no. <laughs> yeah, you are. No, I'm not, sir. I'm in the Lord's Lord Church. Doctrine. I'm in the Lord's Church. What you're church are you in? You're a fake dude, and I, you're gonna be canceled. You ain't about nothing. What, what church are you in? I'm in. A, I'm in a brethren church. All right, show it in the Bible. Here, I'm gonna show it in the Bible. Here, here's the church I'm in. The Church of Christ. Churches, what church are you in? The churches of Christ. It says the churches of Christ. Uh, people listening, it says the churches, not <gasps> the church, the oh. churches of Christ. Wow. That yeah, you got me there. Anybody who follows and how many, believes in God. How many churches? your facts, sir, right, brother. Sir, how many, how many churches? I mean, how many churches do you have to be before hey, well, you have to you meet me face to face and we talk about this? How about that? I'll give you my address. You know me anyway. Who are you? I said, how would you just like to get face to face and we talk about this? You can bring your Bible and whatever you want, and we can sit down and have a civilized conversation. I don't know if, if you can or not. you go sit here and tell me my grandma is in hell for believing in being a dedicated Christian Sir. for over 60 years. Sir, I don't know if we can have a civilized conversation the way you're talking. Well, I don't think we can either until you start them telling people the truth. Sir, Ain't you're no the one sir. getting all riled up, sir. Yeah, I am riled up. And you said I know you. These you said I know you. Who are you? That they believe is not true, and if they don't believe what you believe, that they're going to hell. Sir, it's not true because you're the first one in line with gasoline Sir. draws. Sir, what's your name? Okay. Now that now see now I just want to demonstrate something, friends. That man wants to ensure me that I'm going to hell, and an attitude like that. I may go to hell, but something tells me I'll be right beside him. So, uh, I may go to hell. okay. I'll be right him. You're on the word of the Lord. Oh, uh, Turn your TV down day. a little bit, please. Hello. Turn your TV down a little bit. I'm in. I'm in more in front of me. You're on the air right now. You got about thirty seconds. Okay. You're on the air right now. You got about thirty seconds. Turn your TV down. Please. Okay, this is me? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm with you, bro. One second. We don't have one second, sir. We, I, okay, I'm here. Okay. My now, thing was, all right, my thing is that I, I've enjoyed your message. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You can hear me now? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. All right. Okay, now I'm with you. All right, my thing is that, yeah, the nomination has nothing to do with anything. All right, sir, I'm going to put you on hold for a second. People, y'all going to have to turn your phone, the TV down and listen to the phone. I spent a minute with this guy, and he's still not getting understanding. I know he's, he's trying to be nice. I'm going to take one more call, but I, I, can't, I can't talk to you, sir, because you're not listening to me. You know, you're still listening to your TV, Okay. You're on the word of the Lord. Hello, I had sex with your mother. All right. Okay, well, maybe we should go back to the other call. All right, well. You on the word of the Lord? Yeah, he probably did, dude. <laughs> all right, well, all the Baptists are out tonight. 
I say that because it doesn't really matter how what, what they do because they're all going to go to heaven, I guess. All right, friends. You know, but it just proves my point. That's what you get when you're the whistleblower. That's what you get when you're the whistleblower. We're trying to tell people what's right, what they need to do to, to, to be right with the Lord, and all they want to do is, is bad mouth. i got to wrap up. We're uh, uh, going off the air. So anyway... Thanks for your attention. Appreciate all the calls, even the, even the crazy folks. We're going to pray for you. Till next time, remember to ask what does the Bible say, and you'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock, right here on WGSR. The Commonwealth of Virginia, Governor Robert McDonnell, Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli II, Arizona Governor Janice Brewer, 